In this lecture, we will talk about how to deal with conflict in new venture teams. We will discuss sources of conflict, and we will talk about how to proactively deal with them, improving the collaborative climate of the team. We're sitting at the Museum Kulturen in Lund. The display right here behind us, it shows the armor and the weapons from the Battle of Lund in 1676. Two neighboring nations, Denmark and Sweden, engaged in a greedy battle over trade, wealth, and power. Let's hope that what we learn today can make new venture team conflicts less bloody. My name is Anna Bratström. I work as a researcher and a lecturer at Lund University, Sten K. Jonsson Center for Entrepreneurship. The focus of my research is new venture teams. New venture teams they have a tendency to get along instead of getting ahead. What does this mean and why is that so? Well, getting along means that the team needs unity, trust and safety. It's important for them to work together. You know, when we trust each other, we can more easily challenge each other's viewpoints. We bring forward wild ideas, we acknowledge our incompetence and we praise each other's strength. Trust, unity, safety, therefore, helps us to take action. Getting along, however, can also stand in the way of getting ahead. Taking action, getting ahead, that can challenge trust and unity in a team. When a new venture team takes action, they might realize that their existing knowledge was incomplete, that their current leader is not doing a good job, or in other ways they can come across information and insights that hurt the unity of the team. And therefore, teams have a tendency to get along instead of getting ahead. They focus on preserving the comfort of the team instead of taking action that allows them to move forward. And for a new venture team, where the ability to take action is crucial, this tendency to get along instead of getting ahead can have devastating consequences. Bad team dynamics, therefore, is pushing conflicts under the carpet. This means not taking action or for that matter, caring, trusting, liking each other so much that team members fail to notice each other's weaknesses. Letting friendship stand in the way of learning and improvement. Good team dynamics, on the other hand, that means not letting unity stand in the way for action, while at the same time not allowing action to break the unity of the teams. This is a first source of conflict. Another central dilemma for new venture team is that what they need to make decisions in order to move forward, at the same time, they need to move forward in order to do. In other professional teams, say a military group, a sports team, an R&D project team in an established organization, in these teams, there is usually a formal chain of command. There is a designated leader who makes the decision, takes the action and sets the direction for the team. These decisions might be right, they might be wrong, but at least they, they allow the team to move forward. In a new venture team, authority can be a source of conflict and contention. Decision making is much more complex because there is often unclear authority, unclear role division, there is no clear chain of command, but decisions are made on consensus or voting. And in a situation where the team needs to make decisions to move forward, but also need to move forward in order to decide what to do, this fuzziness can be problematic and cause conflict. Because reaching consensus is difficult, the team will push decisions into the future instead of taking action. And because a sense of personal pride easily emerges within the team, it can be difficult for members to revert decisions, admit mistakes, and in this way, the team gets stuck in a very unfortunate middle point, unable to move forward. Good team dynamics, therefore, can be helped by having clear roles and clear leadership. And we know from research that many new venture teams actually fail because they do not establish clear roles fast enough. Clear, clear roles, they facilitate decision making. And for a new venture team, making no decision might be the worst decision of them all. A third conflict dilemma that easily causes conflict in a new venture team is free riding. Because what is good for the team is not necessarily good for the individual member in the team. For example, the team benefits if all members dedicating their time and effort to the team. 
The individual member, however, might be actually be better off by just waiting and see. To wait and see if the business idea is useful before fully committing. To wait and see if there is a first paying customer before quitting the day job. To wait and see if the new technology works before investing money. In short, it would not be completely irrational to expect some free riding in your new venture team especially when the team faces high uncertainty and high risk. The likelihood of team members to wait and see actually increases. And interestingly, the mere suspicion that one member might free ride on others work can be problematic. For example, if you ask a couple who's doing most of the housework, they are very likely to name themselves. Well, at least in my relationship, both me and my husband were equally convinced that I do more dishes than you do. And in a new venture team, much of the work being done is invisible. It's difficult to measure, and it's difficult to see how other members contribute. I mean, how do you measure the thoughts put into a project? The time spent in refining an idea? The hours invested in chasing a customer who never replies? The mere suspicion of free riding, therefore, can be a source of conflict for the team. Bad team dynamics is a team where this suspicion can roam freely where members are not open, transparent, and honest about the contribution they make. And how to proactively deal with conflict means addressing these dilemmas. So, so far, we've talked about three conflict dilemmas that can hinder a team from moving forward. First, the tendency of a team to get along instead of getting ahead. To avoid uncomfortable decisions if they challenge the unity of the team. Second, the tendency of a team to procrastinate instead of making affirmative decisions. To avoid making a decision because reaching consensus is very challenging. Third, the tendency of a team to experience problems with free riding, even if these problems are only perceived and suspicious and not actually occurring. So after identifying these dilemmas, let's spend some time talking about how they can be proactively managed. In short, it all comes back to unity and action. A good team is a team that knows how to challenge unity in time periods where they're not moving forward and knows how to protect unity in time periods of change and instability. So how do we know when it's time to challenge unity and how do we know when it's time to take action? An indication that unity needs to be challenged is if there is an underlying tension in the team. It could be a leadership conflict, an equity conflict, a conflict over strategic direction. Very often, teams do not want to deal with these conflicts because they fear that bringing them to the surface will challenge unity in the team. They might be afraid to hurt each other's feelings, afraid that bringing up the conflict will cause irreparable damage. Such conflicts, however, they need to be worked out. Because remember, the worst decision is not to decide to do anything. And if you too much focus on preserving unity, you will not be able to take action. If you're facing this type of conflict, you can be helped by bringing in a third party negotiator, an incubator coach, a member of the advisory board, someone who can bring valuable insights and help the team to challenge unity and take action. Unity might also need to be challenged if there are no conflicts at all in the team. If there is no tension, all happy campers just smile, happy faces, that is actually a warning sign. Because remember, there is a darker side also to trust, safety, and unity. Too much trust, too much friendliness makes us blind to each other's weaknesses. And a new venture team cannot afford that. A new venture team needs to acknowledge weakness, learn from them, and improve. So if there's too much niceness in your team, see this as an indication that it's time to be less nice. Dare to challenge unity, because this will help you to take action. Getting stuck in conflict, however, is equally bad. When times get rough and tough, the team needs unity. In time periods of change and negative events, team members can easily turn against one another instead of working together. They start doubting each other, the decisions they have made and the course of action they have taken and committed to. And in such time periods, unity is needed more than anything. Then it's time to take a step back, reflect on what's happening, stick to decision, and have a bit of grit and persistence. You need both unity and action. In this lecture, 
we talked about three conflict dilemmas in new venture teams. We've concluded that teams, they need both unity and action. Good team dynamics. That means knowing how to protect unity when times get tough, but also how to challenge unity and have a bit of conflict when the team gets too comfortable. In all, conflict is inevitable in a new venture team. The trick is to not avoid conflicts altogether, but simply knowing when and how to have a good fight. This was the final lecture in a set of three lectures on new venture teams. For those of you who are engaged in, working with, or curious about new venture teams, I hope they've proven useful. Thank you.